Hey everyone and welcome to A Kinda Crafty Kenzie. Today we are going to do some more Christmas farmhouse style DIYs. So the first thing we are starting off with is this believe sign. I originally just thought I was gonna take these blocks of wood that my husband had cut for me um, and he cut them like in different sizes. I can leave the dimensions, or, yeah, the dimensions in the description box, but really it's whatever size you want them to be. I just wanted them like staggered. I wanted each letter to be a different height from the other one, if you know what I mean. And I originally was going to just piece these together and then stand them up like on a shelf. But as you'll see as this video progresses, I changed my mind multiple times and it turns out being something that I didn't even plan on and not even the same color. But anyways, um, I just went ahead and painted all of these blocks in the white um, chalk paint by Folgart. I'm so lucky to have a place that I can come home to. Yes, I am on my way. So now I am just using my Ray Dunn stencils that I purchased off of Amazon like back in July and I will link them in the description box if I can um, because I don't know if they're still available. But I've seen many decals in this font and even the Dollar Tree offers a stencil um, that's similar to this. I don't think it's quite as big as the lettering, but um, it's pretty close. But as you'll see, I'm just stenciling them out with pencil and then when I go over them with my paint marker, I kind of expand them a little bit anyway, if that's like the right word, um, because they are quite thin and I did want them to be a little, I wanted them to be a little bit bigger. I am on the hunt for um, larger stencils in this, this, this Ray Dunn looking font. I really love it. I don't have a ton of Ray Dunn decor in my home or anything. I actually only have a couple things, a couple candle warmers and maybe like a coffee mug. But um, I like that. I like the um, I like the lettering. I like the simplicity of the lettering, and that's kind of where I wanted this sign to go. So, anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish stenciling these, and then I'm going to color them in with my um, yep paint marker. <laughs> um, guys, it's getting too close to Christmas. I'm not getting enough sleep, and I'm just hopefully we can get through this voiceover. <laughs> but anyways, um, I also got these paint markers, paint pens, whatever you want to call them, off of Amazon as well. Um, and as always, anything that I purchase that is not from the Dollar Tree or Walmart or Dollar General, because that's generally where I get my supplies. I get a few things off of Amazon and I always link them below along with like my favorites, like my glue gun and my heat gun and the kind of glue sticks I use and etc. So if you're ever looking for something and I didn't link it for some reason, go ahead and just give me, drop me a question in the comments and I will be more than happy to help you locate it. Go outside, the snow is falling down, and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size as me. So, this is where the project took a turn, and I decided that maybe I would like it better on a sign going up and down, like leaning up against like my blanket ladder in my living room. So, I took this old St. Patrick's Day sign, which is really, really cute. And it kind of did hurt me to disassemble it and paint over it. But honestly, you guys, I don't decorate for St. Patrick's Day. So I figured there's really no point in keeping it. I did save all the letters and the shamrock, though, that I could maybe do something else. But to have something this large in my home for St. Patrick's Day is probably just not going to happen again. So I went ahead and covered this with my fern chalk paint by Waverly. I really like the color of the green. It was already painted, but as you could see, there was some damage from the letters and I knew I needed to cover that up. So I just went ahead and painted over it anyway. And now I'm just taking my heat gun and I'm just really trying to dry down in those like little um, cracks, those like little divots in the wood. 
sorry for the shaking of the camera you guys i still have not gotten a tripod <laughs> i will get it though um oh i'm just crazed with everything i mean we know how it is but so then i just took some of my waverly elephant chalk paint and of course distressed over the letters Let me give you a Christmas moment we'll fill with love and joy. Mm -mm, so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. I don't need any presents as long as I spend this day with you. Mm -mm, so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. Again, with the same um, elephant gray, I went ahead and distressed over the entire board. I really emphasized on the ship lap, and then um, I knew most of it was going to get covered up due to the letters because I originally planned to stagger these vertical. And then my mom was actually here at this time, and she was like, well, maybe you could play some horizontal and hang this up on the wall. So it originally started off as just a believe, like blocks with the word, spelling out the word believe, all put together, sitting on a shelf, turned into a vertical sign to lean up against a blanket ladder, which then turned into a horizontal sign to hang up on the wall. So as you can see, this project, it wasn't a headache, but it definitely, it did not, it was not what it originally planned out to be. It definitely turned into something way more and took a, obviously a lot longer to make than I originally had planned <laughs> but that's okay I really love the way it turned out and it is very simple um, you'll see here in just a little bit how simple I kept it and I just love the simplicity of it I, it's super farmhouse and I didn't think I was gonna like the green but I actually really do um, you'll have to wait till the end to see the big reveal on where I placed it in my home and how I feel it just looks it just ties everything in together very nicely but so anyways along with the elephant gray chalk paint I just took some white chalk paint and distressed over it to give it that like you know kind of a lighter look I don't know I have no rhyme or reason when I distress you guys I kind of just roll with it and um just see how it turns out and i haven't really not liked too many things i've distressed by doing it this way um so anyways but after i was all done painting and it was all nice and dry i then went ahead and just sanded over everything to kind of soften it up a little bit and make it look even more rustic so for some reason i don't have footage of me sanding the board but um, you can clearly see that it has been sanded. And then I just went ahead and hot glued these down where we had measured them out to go. Um, I only hot glued them just to keep them in place. And then my husband went ahead with some finishing nails and attached them. And then he attached some little wall hangers on the back for me to hang them up on the wall. So now I'm just using one of these bulb ornament style signs for this next project. This was for my home, so I did not even worry about the back. So I just flipped it on over and gave it a good coat of white chalk paint. I'm going to use this calendar um, and use this really pretty, um, simple picture, I guess you could say, from the calendar and put it on here. But I knew that the numbers would show through if I left it against the dark background. So I just went ahead and gave it a coat of the white chalk paint and that really did the job. You can't see the numbers at all now from the calendar page. So then I just took my heat gun and dried it because I have the patience of a toddler and could not wait to get this project done. And then I don't know what I was doing. I think I thought I was working with paint and just went ahead and plopped a whole bunch of Mod Podge out. And I don't know if you guys have ever watched TikTok or have TikTok, but that one TikTok that goes, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. That rings in my head every time I see this. Like, and my first initial thought was pick it up because I didn't want it to run everywhere. It did stop, thankfully. 
And then I thought, nope, I ain't wasting that. that that's stuff. I, I paid good money for this. So I'm scooping it back into the jug. And that actually successfully worked. I got it all scooped in and then left enough on there to spread around and go ahead and put my picture down. Now, the board was a little more saturated than I normally do with Mod Podge. So I broke my own rule. And you should never break rules, you guys. And after I got the calendar page all situated down on the board, instead of letting it dry for 10 to 15 minutes, I went ahead and Mod Podged. And I did get some wrinkles. This is why you do not break your own rule. You don't fix it if it's not broke. I don't know why I did that. I, I don't know. I, I can't even, I have no idea. So anyways, then I did let it dry for like a day. Literally, you can see my clothes are different now. And I went around it and sanded off all of the excess. And I love what it did to this. It kind of like, when it tore off, it didn't tear off perfectly straight. It got really, as you can see, it bent up a little bit. And I was like, oh, no big deal. Just ripped that off too. It, it kept it really rustic. So then I thought, what more rustic way to display this would be to put a little rope on it. So I took some of the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and then just wrapped it around the entire sign. So then I did decide to go ahead and reuse the little ornament hanger that came on the sign. And I did not like the shiny, metallic-y gray, of course. So I covered over it, over it, over it with some elephant gray chalk paint. And then I don't know if you want to call it a galvanized look or a rustic look or a rusty look or whatever. I don't know. I think that the line between non-galvanized and galvanized is so blurry. Like, what is truly a galvanized look? What is not? I don't know, you guys. I just did what I wanted to do to make it look cute, and that's that. I call it more rustic than galvanized. Whatever. So, I went back and forth between the gray, the truffle, and the white chalk paint, and in between coats of the different colors, I did hit it with the heat gun. And if you do this, it works super great and it makes this go a lot faster than sitting and waiting for it to dry. But be very careful because you are going to heat that little piece of metal up and it's going to be hot, hot, hot. So anyways, I just kept doing this until I reached the desired look and apparently something caught my attention there. Um, and then once I was finally happy with the way it looked, then I just went ahead and attached it back to the sign. And again, it's metal, so once that hot glue hits it, move quickly because it's going to be warm. So then I kind of went rogue and steered away from normal pine, um, like all together on this. I went ahead and took one of these lamb's ear picks that I think I got at Hobby Lobby back in like the spring or the fall or something. Probably the fall, the fall actually. I wasn't crafting in the spring actually. So anyways, and I just cut them up. And then I did take some of these like little pieces of evergreen that I had from leftover from a pick from Joanne Fabrics. Um, you guys, if you want some high-end looking florals, and I'm talking like nice bushels of florals to where you can actually display them in your home, literally you can just put them out as they are, 
Gem Fabrics is the place to go. They beat Michael's prices big time. And with the coupons and sales that they have, they can beat Hobby Lobby too. So anyways, then I just took some of this eucalyptus that I had as well and just attached it. I definitely wanted to keep a very simple look and I kind of wanted to do a different style than what I normally do, which is like red and berries and pine and I love it, but I am loving this even more. Like it makes me question all of my red decor, but I'm like, nope, it's it's nope, not this Christmas. We're we're just we're just going with it. So <laughs> I was gonna put white berries on it as you could see me playing with them, but this the picture already has berries on them and I thought that they just clashed too much. So I went ahead and X made those. Then I took some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I kind of like untwined it or untied it or unraveled it and made a cute little rustic bow. I love doing little bows like these. If you don't have any nautical rope, you could easily just take a bunch of twine and wrap it together around your hand or something and make a bow. I just, I love, I just love that look. I think it just gives it such a different, I don't know. It's very rustic and I just, I really love it. Then I love it so much that I was like, I'm gonna use this for my hanger. And it kind of reminds you of like when you braid your hair and you take your hair out and it's like, oh, it's so pretty and wavy. And like, that's what this reminds me of, so. I just went ahead and attached it to the sign, tied a knot in the top, and then she's ready to hang on the wall. And I think this turned out so pretty. So this next project I almost didn't even include because it was really just one of those ones I was just playing around with. But sometimes the cutest things can come out of just like goofing around. Plus, it was keeping me from doing laundry, so I just kept on crafting. <laughs> but anyways, um, super easy. I just took one of these oval-shaped, unfinished wood planks from the Dollar Tree. I took these, like, little half beads and glued them to the bottle like little table legs. I got those off of Amazon. You can get them from Hobby Lobby, but they are linked below from Amazon. And then I just took some of the antique wax and went ahead and gave this a good coat of that. And then I did wipe off the excess. And then I went ahead and sanded around the edge because I love the distressed look. Y'all already know farmhouse distressed, the more distressed, the better. I just love it, love it, love it. Then I had these little houses, like this little village set I got from the Dollar General. It was really cute, super like just natural, like really pretty. So these little houses I didn't get to put out because they were so small and I wasn't able to attach like any tumbling tower blocks to them to get them to stand alone. So I just didn't get to use them. So now that I was able to glue them down on a surface, I got to incorporate them. Then I just made this little snowman um, that you can see laying there. I actually made a smaller one because he was too big. And I show you how I make these on my um, farmhouse ornaments part one video. You guys will have to go check that out. And then I just attached him, a little piece of this evergreen, from a Joanne Fabrics pick and this is all done and I think it is quite adorable for being just kind of like a throw together we'll see what happens so then this next project I am using one of these little sled ornaments from the Dollar Tree i would gotten quite a few of these and I hadn't done anything with them so I thought well it is now a never so of course I disassembled it because that's what I do <laughs> with most of the Dollar Tree stuff and then I just went ahead and cut some popsicle sticks down to size. But as you can see, my Dollar Tree scissors finally gave up. Guys, these were my all-time favorite scissors from the Dollar Tree. They were the perfect size. I just loved them so much, but they just went kerplunk. The good news is my husband was able to fix them, so they're back in action. I just don't know for how long. So I went ahead and grabbed this really crappy pair of Dollar Tree scissors that I absolutely hate and then continued to cut my popsicle sticks. So once I had enough um, to cover the sled, of course, I just went ahead and glued them down. So after I got all my little pieces laid down, then I went ahead and painted it in the truffle brown color. And I got really lucky <laughs> because it matched the original um, sled color so well that I didn't have to go over it so I just painted the front of like the popsicle stick and then I went ahead and flipped it over and painted the back as well oh, 
Then I went ahead and used some white chalk paint to give this sled like a snowy look. Um, like it had been snow kissed, <laughs> I guess you could say. And I just dry brushed over the sled and then kind of went heavy around the edges and then went down and did like the bottom of the sled as well. So now I'm taking one of these little buckets that I have gotten from Amazon. You get 24 for $12, so that is two for a dollar, which is the same price as the little white ones that are at the Dollar Tree. So I bought these because that way I could just get a bunch of them because I use them a lot. And it would be really nice if you could see what I was doing right now, huh? Because, guys, my angles are terrible sometimes. I really have got to get a tripod. <laughs> Um, so anyways, I just went ahead and took some chalk paint and went over it and I only used a little bit of paint and just kept smearing it around and what happened was then like the chalk paint was, you know, almost drying while I was doing this and then I was able to like smear it thin in some places like you'll see how it turns out in the end. It's so pretty but what's crazy is this is the third bucket like this that I have done in this exact same way. And they all three look different. Like I use the same colors, the same technique, but all three of them look a little bit different. So it's kind of cool. Then I just went over it again with some brown truffle color. And this turned out so gorgeous. This is definitely one of my favorite things I've made this whole little project here. I absolutely love it. And again, it was just something that I was just kind of playing around with, not sure where it was going to go. And it turned out amazing. But I just went back and forth between the white and the brown until I got like a happy, you know, color going on. And I did hit it with the heat gun in between again. I didn't have to as much because it dry I really dry brushed it. Like I really didn't go too heavy on it. So it dried really fast. But I think this is absolutely gorgeous. It looks so super rustic. I mean, look at that. Oh, so beautiful. So farmhouse. Oh, love it. So then I just went ahead and glued some cotton balls down into um, my bucket because I wanted to give my sticks and things some height. So I started by going ahead and putting in one of these little birch twigs that I actually just got from my backyard that my husband cut up for me. Um, so I was super excited about that because I love like the wood look. And then I was like, well, I'm going to cut some pine. And you guys, are you ready for this? Two times in one day, literally one video, boom, another pair of scissors broke. I was so annoyed. Like, I literally, like, <laughs> I was like, what am I doing wrong? And my husband's like, um, cut it with, you know, the right shear thingies. And I'm like, fine. So I got my shears out and then everything went a little bit smoother. But he was able to fix both pairs. So, yeah that's pretty awesome so anyways i then um just used my handy little vacuum and cleaned up that pine you guys i'm loving that vacuum and then you're probably wondering what is she doing why is she using a heat gun on pine because accidentally i was doing a project the day before and i had a little wreath that i had made out of the garland ties like this laying close by and i was drying a paint project and i looked i started smelling that nasty burning fake you know that garland smell and i'm like oh no i hit my wreath but it looked so cool so now i've been doing that to all my pine not all of it but you know especially the ones from the dollar tree instead of trimming it and making a mess i just went ahead and hit it with the heat gun and it makes it pretty cool looking i don't know if i recommend doing this a whole lot though because it stinks really bad and it's probably not good for you but anyways enough of my rambling so you can see what I'm doing here. I am just going back and forth between these little birch twigs and then the little pine um, twigs that I'm putting in here. And then I had a couple little pieces of pine off of some old projects that I had just pulled off that I went and incorporated in here as well, just to kind of break up the pine and give it like a little bit of a different look. But this was just, oh, I can't wait for you to see the end result. But 
So then I just took a little bit of white chalk paint and kind of just gave a little bit of flocking to the pine and the little birch um, branches just to give it that snow kissed look to tie everything together. We forgot what you came for. So now I'm just using some jute twine to go ahead and just like kind of create like a rope look for this. You can't hang this because obviously then you're pale would be like sideways you know what I mean but I wanted it to look like it's like a sled you're pulling with like your firewood on it you know what I mean so that was the whole concept behind this and it originally started out as just a pail was going to be an ornament um in fact I made one that you know I turned into just like an ornament but then my husband suggested making a sled because I was making a sled and he suggested putting the pail on it and I thought oh wow that would be really cute so anyways, um, then I just went ahead and attached it to the sled, and this is just so adorable, you guys. This is so Christmas. This is so winter. You can put, leave this up like all winter long. I was going to wait and put it in one of my winter DIY videos for you guys that I'm saving for after Christmas, but I just cannot wait to share it with you. You could easily add some berries and, you know, maybe some red, um, rope to it or something to make it more Christmassy but I definitely love this look so and then as you can see I just added some thicker pieces of a little birch wood um, that my husband had cut from a birch branch and then I just put some snow on it so way everything inc looked incorporated like it you know was, got some snow on it and I just I absolutely love it you guys how cute is that oh one of my favorite things I've ever made love it so now I'm just taking another sled and I put it together the same exact way um, and then I went ahead and covered it with the truffle the same way I did the previous one front and back. Then I went ahead and did the snow scene. I went a little heavier on the snow this time because it is going to be something completely different. So then I just took one of these a garland ties from the Dollar Tree and I hit it with a heat gun again and then I took some of the jute twine and tied a hanger this time that is going to be used as a hanger versus like the little rope for you know just decoration um, then I just took another or the same tie the same garland ties the same one that I heat gunned I'll get it together and then I just glued it down to the sled. So now I'm going to go ahead and just give it a good coat of the white chalk paint, like a little flocking look. I do go pretty heavy on purpose because I wanted it to look like it was very snow covered. But um, I am going to add some red berries and things to it so they will make them pop a whole lot bigger or a whole lot more with all the white behind them. So these particular berries that I am using, um, these little berry picks, I actually got from Amazon and I will link them um, I don't really think anybody's still decorating for Christmas but you could get them and then you know maybe use them next year or something I definitely have lots left over but I really liked working with these because they were a nice hard plastic they weren't like the little foamy ones and you know those are really nice from like the dollar stores and stuff but sometimes when you pick them apart they do like peel so anyways then i just took this little burlap bow from my mini bow collection and just attached it to the sled and then finished putting the berries on and i thought this is a really cute and simple um it could be a little simple way to display a wreath something different on a sled you could use it as an ornament or you could use it you know just on a tear tray or you know wherever then i did go ahead and incorporate one of these cute little faux 
um, wood slice looking ornaments from Walmart and then I went ahead and just attached it up under the bow. Um, in hindsight, if I knew I was going to use this, I would have attached it under the bow completely, but I did just kind of have to like finagle it up in there, but it still turned out really cute. So now I am taking one of these little palette wood planks that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I did a project really similar to this in the beginning of the season, but I painted it red. And I actually have one in my home right now that I have painted like this and just did a little bit of a different style to it that a family member actually really, really liked. So I went ahead and made her one very similar to mine. So all I did was cover it with some white chalk paint front and back, but I am going to use this particular side right here. And then I just went ahead and um, distressed it in the Elephant Gray by Waverly. I went a little heavy on the distressing, but I did that on purpose because her ornament that I'm going to attach to it is actually black. And I thought that that would tie everything together a little bit more. So now I'm just going to go ahead and use this adorable little ornament from Walmart. They come in a pack of, I believe, four or five for $1.98. I have used them a lot. Um, this one says joy to the world. Then I just went ahead and removed the black ribbon that came on it because I wanted to string these little natural beads on it and they wouldn't have, they won't go down over the ribbon. So then I just used some of the little black natural cord that I had here on hand that I had got at the Dollar Tree or Dollar General. Then I just tied a knot so the beads wouldn't slip glued it down to the little palette and then put a little black and white buffalo check bow on top of it and then I put a little button in the middle of the bow then I just cut that extra off that you see there at the top and then I went ahead and painted those little beads with some of the elephant gray chalk paint So for this next project, I am just using one of these Dollar Tree signs that I had already um, painted. I love when I find signs that I've painted and put them away because then it takes out like half the work. <laughs> so then I just used my ruler and drew some shiplap lines and then went over them with this gray um, paint marker. Then of course I went ahead and distressed it with some elephant chalk paint. I went around the edges and then I went through the body of the sign a little bit as well. So after I sanded it to soften it up a little bit more, then I just took another piece of this nautical rope and un, like completely pulled it apart. Um, I could have probably just used twine too, but I don't know. I, this is just thicker and I just, you can see that it's kind of curly. I, I just like this look a little bit better, but you could definitely use twine to do this as well. And all I did was kind of like brush it apart as you can see like with my fingers and then just wrapped it around the back of the sign on both sides and then just attached it to the back with some hot glue and a little piece of popsicle stick and kind of just gave like you know that like little edging look like you'll see i think it's really cute So now I am going to go ahead and do that same effect to this little piece word sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree and um, it's that really shiny like metal look 
So I just went over it with the elephant gray and then I went over it with the white and then I went ahead and did the truffle too. And the same thing in between colors, I used the heat gun and just kept going back and forth until I reached the desired look I was looking for. I didn't realize I did so much metal like work like this in this video, but I guess that was the <laughs> that was like the gist of this video. That was the theme. But I really love the way they all turned out. I think it's so pretty. It just makes it look super rusty and just old. And then I just attached the peace sign down, as you can see, to the board. Then I just used one of these Dollar Tree um, little Christmas trees that you get in the pack. All I did was trace it. And then I just kind of went rogue. When I was painting it, I definitely went off the beaten path or off of my line i guess you could say and my tree just kept getting fatter and fatter and fatter but um yeah so you probably wouldn't even need to trace this if you're pretty confident in freehanding because i definitely kind of just did my own thing but um i i don't know i i like I, I like it i think they look cute <laughs> So then I just went through and kind of emphasized like where the tree branches are with some white chalk paint to give it the appearance that they had some snow on them. And I just thought this was a really simple and just really pretty farmhouse, rustic, pretty sign. Then I just used some of my truffle chalk paint that I had in my brush and just dry brushed on some stumps. So next, oh guys, don't hate me. But yes, I took this really pretty joy sign um, that I've had for a few years. I'd gotten it from like a Dollar General, I believe, for like $5. Um, and yes, I did cover it with white chalk paint because I just didn't care for it. I don't know. It just, I tried to keep it up this season and I've had it displayed in my home and I just wasn't digging it. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a merry mail sign. It's something that you can go ahead and display your Christmas cards on. So I painted it white and only took one coat surprisingly. And then I just used my Ray Dunn stencils, stenciled them in with um, a pencil and then went ahead and colored them in with a paint marker. And then I went around the edge of them and outlined them in black. I just thought that it made it look it just made him pop off and look a, a, like a lot better. I like it. And then you can probably see in the left-hand corner there, little hands are always close by. <laughs> so she's just obsessed with stuff when I paint it. So she is sneaking a little touch as I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I don't know what she would have done if it would have been wet. <laughs> but anyways, luckily it was paint marker and it dries pretty fast. So that is my three-year-old, almost four-year-old runner she's that's a little stinker so anyways after that was all done then i just went ahead and drew some shiplap lines over everything like even over the letters just um just just you know completely distressed the whole thing you know you don't want it to look like that the sign was already shiplapped and distressed and then you slap these sparkly new letters on them so I did that and I went over them with a regular pencil first and then I went back over them with a 
dark green color pencil um, because I didn't want to use a paint marker. I didn't want it to be that dark. So I really wait, I really liked the way they looked when I did that. And then of course I went around it with my um, truffle brown chalk paint and just went ahead and distressed around the sign. Whoop, and there she is again. Then I went ahead with some sandpaper and I did sand it all. And then I am using some of these red little um, clothespins that I got from Dollar General. Um, you can buy these from the Dollar Tree and paint them red. Um, I bought them for a dollar from the Dollar General already painted red and that sounded better to me. So that's what I did. And all I'm doing is attaching them and then kind of just deciding which way I want the twine to go. So I decided to go like left to right, then a diagonal down that you'll see but um so yeah this is just a super cute way that i saw somewhere that i thought i wanted to try to display your christmas cards on because you know you tend to get them and then usually like tape them to a door or a doorway or something and they end up falling down and getting destroyed so i thought that this was really cute to do this and i did put little bows everywhere and my husband made fun of me he said it was too many bows but i couldn't take them off and as you can see they get covered up anyway so I really liked them. Well, then I did take one of these little ornaments that I got from Target Dollar Spot in that box for $5, and I just attached that little tree with a little burlap bow to the top, and this guy is all done. And I hope you all ready for the big reveal.
I'm gonna thank you guys for coming along with me today while I crafted. As always, I had so much fun, and I know this is a bit of a longer video. I didn't realize quite how long until I had to voice over it, but I'm just trying to put as much as I can in these videos to get them out for you guys before this Christmas season is over. I have so many more DIYs that I wish I was going to be able to show you, but unfortunately I am just literally running out of time. <laughs> and um, I still have to finish some shopping, y'all. But I do have a video coming up on Monday. It is gonna be a combination of some cute farmhouse style and cozy cabin style um, ornaments, and then some um, adorable Christmas cutie tear tray projects. So don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you don't miss that upload. And then on Wednesday, I am going to put out my Christmas home tour where you will be able to see all of the other projects my husband and I have created this Christmas season, including the outdoor ones. Hopefully, I am able to show you my outdoor. Right now, I have about, about, blah, blah, I have about 18 inches of snow. So I'm hoping by Wednesday, some of it will be gone so I can show you guys outside. But other than that, if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing, hit that like button, and don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. My handle's on the screen now, and it's always in the description box. And I will see you guys on Monday. Bye.